Okay, uh, hi everyone. We are going to begin our series on this one, uh, the ultimate uh, resource guide uh, for uh, the last bit of your preparation. Uh. Okay, and uh, this series of videos is going to be uh, by topic. Okay, so we're going to do uh, we're going to do the forces and motion questions in this video first. Uh. Okay, so let's begin. Diagram 9.1 shows a pile driving system that is used in building construction. Okay, so you have a pile driver and then the definition that they ask usually sets the tone for uh, what is the subtopic about and what zone you need to be in. Lah. Okay, so this first question is usually a very important question. Okay, to kind of set the tone for whatever the question is. So you know that if you talk about impulse, you need to talk about momentum, you need to talk about impulsive force, uh, time of impact. These are things that you need to think about lah, Okay, when you do this question. Okay, so what is the meaning of impulse? Impulse is uh, the change of momentum or change in momentum. Lah. Okay, that's the, def that's the usual definition. Now remember, there are two formulas for impulse. Okay, and usually I like to tell students to look at the information given. Okay, you can be given impulse is force times time, okay, if they give you force and time. And then the other one is the change in momentum, which is the actual definition, which is mv minus mu. Now, the formula list they give to you, they will give it to you in this way, ft equals to mv minus mu. But most of the time, we find that in impulse questions, they don't give you ft equals to mv minus mu. They give you either information enough for ft or information enough for mv minus mu. Okay, so uh, you need to take that into account. Lah. Okay, so describe how the pile is driven into the ground. Okay, so of course, this one you need to talk about. Since you're talking about impulse, you definitely have to talk about impulsive force. Lah. Okay, so think about it. Lah. How do you drive it into the ground? You need to have a big energy on top and you let go. It has that impact and the impact gives a very big impulsive force. Okay, so point number one. The pile driver is raised. Okay, so this pile driver here, okay, is raised to a certain height. And when you talk about raised to a certain height, uh, you have to talk about the high potential energy. Okay, to a certain height and obtains high gravitational potential energy. Okay, gravitational potential energy okay then when it is let go it will hit the pile okay so when the pile driver is released okay it will hit the pile with a big momentum well, you can say big momentum or it will, you know, travel at the high velocity. Um, um, oh, sorry, not just moment. Ah, yeah, momentum. Huh? So, you know, hit with a big velocity, hit with a big momentum. Okay, and so this will create a very big change in momentum over a short period of time. So the time of impact, okay, is small. So the rate of change of momentum which in our understanding this is called the impulsive force huh? okay is high now since the rate of change of momentum alias the impulsive force is high okay so the high impulsive force okay pushes the pile into the ground okay and that's how you would get this one. so talk about the energy uh, that you accumulate by bringing the pile driver up high then we release it you know it hits with a big momentum and you talk about the change of momentum over a short period of time then you can connect it to impulsive force and so we usually find that in questions like this um, impulse and everything this is kind of the zone that you need to be in lah. Okay, uh, when you talk about uh, impulse, you cannot run from impulsive force, you cannot run from momentum, and obviously you cannot run from high velocity. Lah. 
Okay, all right. High jump athlete in action. Okay, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So used by a high jump athlete to improve his performance to avoid injury, you need to make the choice. So of course, you have these four choices, and as always, we will analyze before writing the answer into the table form. Okay, so the type of shoes, obviously you want shoes with spikes. Lah. Oh, oh, sorry. You want shoes with spikes. And the reason for this, uh, usually shoes with spikes have better grip. Lah. Okay, better grip or you prevent from uh, slipping. Okay, mengelak daripada tergelincir. So these are usually the answers for uh, with spikes. Now the running speed before the jump this is very normal. Whenever you have a high jump, this is a high jump event, right? You need to have a certain speed. And usually, of course, you will need to have a high speed. That is very normal. Okay, high speed uh, before the jump. Okay, and what does the high speed give you? Now, whenever you talk about high speed, usually we talk about uh, high uh, kinetic energy. Okay, or high momentum. Now, why am I talking about kinetic energy and momentum specifically? Lah? Okay, because if you think about it, kinetic energy, the formula for kinetic energy is half mv squared. Okay, there's a v over here. The formula for momentum is mass times velocity. Okay, so you want to talk about having that momentum because that momentum will give you that jump. That, that high kinetic energy will be transferred into the jump to give you that high potential energy. Okay, you can talk about high force or high pressure, but it's really, really out of the way like, because force is mass times acceleration. Okay, and slightly different concept, like, okay, which I will not go into this. Okay, slightly different concept if you want to talk about how to achieve a high jump. Uh, you want to have a high force, but it's not entirely there. Like, okay, you want to have that change in energy. You want to have that change in momentum. And because the zone that we are in is talking about impulses, if you notice, uh, so far we have not been talking about force. Okay, everything is impulse, impulsive force, momentum, energy. So you notice that we don't talk about force in this particular question. So try not to bring, you know, outside elements in. Like, when you answer a question in an essay, be in the correct zone. Okay, don't pull everything from here and there unless the question asks you to do so. Like. Okay, so the falling technique. Do you want to bend your body or do you want to straighten your body? Obviously, we want to bend our body. At this point, okay, at this point, you already have two answers circled already. Okay, so you kind of know that you want to have P as the chosen one. Okay, so you bend the body. Now, why do you bend the body? Same thing like bending your uh bending your knees uh when you ever do this one, it is to increase the time of impact. Okay, and why do we want to increase the time of impact? To decrease, this comes as a set, huh, everybody, impulsive force. Okay, you increase time of impact to decrease impulsive force. Remember this as a set. Okay, uh, usually I will tell students, uh, don't mention one without the other. Okay, you mention one, you must mention the other. It's just like your left hand, right hand. Huh? Okay, you must have both hands together. You cannot just have like one hand doing all the job. Okay, mattress. Of course, you want to have mattress thick. Okay, thick mattress is very normal. Okay, with the exact same reason as well. Okay, to decrease the time of uh, sorry, to decrease the impulsive force or to increase the time of impact. Totally fine to give the same reason for both. Okay, and of course in the table, don't forget the ninth and the tenth mark comes from writing the correct specifications and writing the right reason. Okay, so don't forget that uh, this is a 10 mark question. Make sure you have all five rows in your table complete. Okay, diagram 9.3 shows a cat with a mass of 5 kg jumping off a wall. The cat bends its legs, okay, when landing. So why does the cat bend its legs when landing? Now, everybody at this time, you should know this. Lah. Okay, to increase the time of impact and to decrease the impulsive force. Okay, I'm just going to give you the short form over here. Now, calculate the impulse of the cat when it touched the ground if the velocity just before landing is 6. Now, just before landing, uh, that means when it is landing, it is at 6. So, U is 6. V is 0 because touch the ground is 0. Already, uh, and the mass of the cat is 5 kg. Now, this is what I mean just now when I said impulse formula is 2. One is force times time and the other one is mv minus mu. 
question, sorry, in the in the exam paper, they will give you the formula like this. Okay? But you shouldn't have to do it that way. Okay, you count either one of it, now you can get the uh, you can get the impulse. Okay, and so since we are given U, V, and M, obviously it makes sense to count impulse equals to mv minus mu. That's it. Forget about the force times time because that's the other side of the equation, which is actually essentially the same thing. Lah. So mv minus mu will be uh, m times v is zero because it lands on the ground and then minus five times uh, six. So you get negative 30. Of course, this one comes with the correct unit, lah, kilogram meters per second. The same unit as momentum. Now calculate the impulsive force produced if the time taken to stop is two seconds. Okay, so this is impulsive force is mv minus mu over t. This is standard. Lah. Okay, so this will give you negative 30 divided by 2, which is negative 15. Force is always Newton. Don't be very hung up about the negative. Okay, negative just means that, uh, you know, that the thing landed. Okay, and you know, the impact is on the person. Sorry, <clears throat> the impact is on the cap. Lah. Okay, so totally not nothing to worry about. Don't worry about the negative. If you substitute everything correctly, I don't think this question will be a very big problem. Okay, uh, let's carry on. Uh. So the Salango set 2 is also from the same topic uh, and kind of the same subtopic as well. Uh, okay, but uh, in this case, they're asking for momentum. Okay, so uh, again, as always, the first question sets the tone for the, ex mm. for the essay question to make sure that you are in the right zone. Okay, so what is meant by momentum? Momentum is the product okay, of mass and velocity now i would not advise you can but i would not advise uh for you uh, to write definitions in terms of the formula lah. okay so based on the concept of momentum explain how the lily pad moves backwards when the frog leaps forward so of course this one we have to talk about uh the principle of conservation of momentum lah. okay so the frog leaps forward with a velocity produces momentum and then according to the principle of conservation of momentum, make sure to mention this principle. Uh, okay. Principle of conservation of momentum. Okay. P C M. The total momentum before and after the jump is the same. Okay. And then the third mark is backwards momentum is produced, which you know produces a momentum that is equal in uh, magnitude, uh, but in opposite direction. Okay, so frontwards momentum is by the frog, backwards is by the lily pad, and that's why the lily pad moves backwards okay when the frog leaps forwards so that's how we would approach this question you take it you can take a screenshot you can pause the video to copy down the explanation over here lah. <clears throat> okay so chose a water bottle rocket it's a slightly different question than the one we answered previously uh in uh i can't remember which state it was i think it's Trangano. uh and so this one is uh only very slightly different okay so uh, first, we have the water bottle rocket. We have, of course, the four characteristics. Lah. So, of course, the first one is you want a, uh, you want a small mass. Okay, this is uh, this is pretty normal. Okay, you want a small mass so that okay. Now, when you have when you talk about small mass, uh, usually the reason is not lighter. Lah. Usually, if we talk about let's say low density, yeah, uh, okay, low density. So the reason for low density will be uh, then it will be lighter or low mass lah. okay but now the characteristic uh, is not low density the characteristic is low mass so whenever you talk about low mass you have to give a slightly different uh, you have to give a slightly different uh slightly different answer lah. okay so a low mass okay usually is associated with uh high velocity can be achieved okay can be achieved easily okay or another one can be uh can achieve a higher uh, acceleration okay this is also a possible answer lah. okay secondly we have a uh, aerodynamic shape okay i've yet to see an or <laughs> uh, an oval rocket lah. now aerodynamic the answer for aerodynamic is usually quite standard lah. okay is to reduce uh resistance 
Okay, now to up your answer a little bit, we always have to mention the specific kind of resistance which we're talking, which we need to overcome. Lah. Okay, which in this case will be air resistance. Hydrodynamic is water resistant, but aerodynamic is uh, air resistance. Okay, now the volume of water, of course the two choices here are either one third or one fifth. Okay, and in this case, the better choice Okay, again, uh, at this point, you already know which, which direction you're going. Uh. Okay, you need to choose S. So, you will probably need to choose a one-third, okay, from the volume of the bottle. And the reason for this is, okay, so when you do the rocket experiment, uh, it's important that uh, you know that you cannot fill in the water until so full, okay? But you can fill in like maybe half or one-third. There has to be enough water uh, so that it can produce a big enough backwards momentum in order for it to launch forward. The specification for this particular question okay, is to choose the most suitable water rocket that can travel far. So again, uh, we want to have a rocket that is traveling far and not traveling high. Okay, So in order to travel far, you need to talk about uh, how far it can go. We need to talk about the horizontal component. Uh. Okay, So the answer, the reason for this Okay, is uh to uh to achieve uh, okay a bigger horizontal distance. Okay, uh to achieve a bigger horizontal distance for the rocket lah. This is actually just another way of saying uh, the words that can travel far. But you just don't want to use the words the rocket can travel further because that's already in the question. So be very careful, everybody. You need to be able to give your answer in such a way that it does not repeat these words that is already in the question. You cannot give reasons that's already in the question because it's in the question. Okay, You have to come up with your own answer. So this is another way of saying traveling far lah, okay, to achieve a bigger horizontal distance. One-fifth not so good lah because you know you have very little water so only enough water to push you back a little bit one third is a lot more okay uh now the angle of launching again everybody you want to travel far you don't want to travel uh you don't want to travel uh, high so you want to have a 45 degree angle with the same reason as well to achieve a bigger uh horizontal uh distance okay i just want to add something um, so the one third, uh, okay, the one third volume of bottle, mm -hmm. besides helping you to achieve a bigger horizontal distance, another possible reason, uh, okay, that you can give, uh, is because this is still, uh, essentially it is still a momentum question because our zone is in momentum, uh, so to you can say to increase the momentum, okay, or even to increase the impulsive force, you can also say that, lah. Uh, Okay, to increase the momentum or the impulsive force. Just an, just uh, an alternative answer. Lah. Okay, but the 45 degrees one is definitely to achieve a bigger horizontal distance. You want to travel further. Okay, so the best answer will be S. Okay, uh, finally, we have a gun situation over here. Okay, so you have a bullet of mass 50 grams. Okay, fire at a velocity of 350 meters per second from a rifle of 6 kilograms. So draw an arrow, the movement of the rifle after the bullet is fired up. And the bullet is fired up to the right. Of course, your gun must go to the left. Okay, and just as a recall, sorry, sorry, just as a ulangan, uh, this is called the recoil. Uh, okay, the recoil movement. Okay, so determine the velocity of the rifle. Now, this is an explosion situation. So, this would be 0 equals to... Now, let's talk about the gun. Uh, 6 times V. Okay, it's going to go behind your V. So, 6V plus... Then, the mass of the bullet is 50 grams. Don't forget to change it to kilograms. So, it would be 0 0.05 times 350. Okay, you calculate all this, you get V equals to negative 2.92 uh, meters per second. Okay, and of course it's negative because it's going to the back. So totally not a problem at all. Now state the principle applied in this situation. At first I wondered why they asked this question and then I realized that in the entire question, 
they didn't actually talk about principle of conservation of momentum. Okay, so you want to name the principle, uh, principle of conservation of momentum. Now, the important thing about this question, and I now I appreciate uh, why they asked, uh, is that the principle is the principle of conservation of momentum, but the situation is explosion. Remember, there are three situations or three types of collision okay, in the principle of conservation of momentum. One is the elastic collision. Okay. Uh, and one is the inelastic collision. And then the third one is, of course, our situation over here, which is explosion. Okay, but these three are not principles. The principle is still the principle of conservation of momentum. The situation is explosion. So I appreciate why they ask this question because they're trying to catch and see uh, if people will answer explosion. <laughs> okay, but that's not the principle. Okay, the principle is principle of conservation of momentum. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. This is from SMKA 2022. Now, in the handout that you have been given, uh, the diagram is not clearly drawn. So I'm just going to sort of draw it for you here. Okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, 11.1 .1 shows a bouncing ball released to the floor. 11.2 .2 shows a similar ball released from the same height. So let's assume that this is the same height. Okay, uh, onto a thick carpet. Okay, so one is floor. Okay, over here is the floor and over here is a carpet. Okay, and so uh, impulse force experienced by uh, both balls are different. So what is the meaning of impulsive force? Okay, so impulsive force is the rate of change of momentum. Okay, remember the difference between impulse, which is just change of momentum, and impulsive force is rate of change of momentum. Okay, compare the height of the bouncing ball, compare the time of the impact, and compare the impulsive force. So the height of the bouncing ball obviously is 11.1 .1 is equals, ah, sorry, 11.1 .1 is uh, more okay, than 11.2. Okay, we're not talking about this height now, we're talking about this height. Okay, the height after it has bounced. So 11.1 .1 has a bigger bounce. Obviously, because it hits the floor and not the carpet. Now, the time of impact, 11.1 .1 is less than 11.2. That's why it can go higher. And of course, the impulsive force, 11.1 .1 is bigger than 11.2. If you know your impulsive force concept, I think this should not be a problem. Nah? So state the relationship between the height of the bouncing ball and the time of impact. So obviously, the bigger the time, the smaller the height. Okay, now remember that the order in which you write the relationship is very important. Okay, masa hantaman itu yang menentukan tinggi lantunan, bukan the other way around. So that's why the time has to be stated first, and then only the height. Okay, I think my biggest worry for this question is that a lot of people will get this part of the question wrong. They will say, oh, 11.1 .1 is equals to 11.2 because they're looking at this height. Okay, but the question is not asking about that height. Nah. They're not talking about the starting height. Okay, they're not talking about the height of release. They're talking about the height of the bounce. Okay, so be very careful with this. Lah. Okay, you don't mess up this question because it will mess up this question also. Of course, state the relationship between time and impact and impulsive force. You don't even need the diagram in order for you to do this. Okay, the bigger the time of impact, the smaller the impulsive force or the other way around. But again, time must come first and then the impulsive force okay so it doesn't matter what the what the order of the question is huh? okay notice huh, that in my answers both i started with time but in question two huh, the question started with the height and then asked you to talk about time but we don't work that way okay the relationship must be logical apa yang penentu apa yang ditentukan what is affecting what Okay, be very aware of this lah, okay, when you're writing the relationship. It's not very difficult. You just need to not go into automatic mode, okay, uh, when you look at the question. Okay, always think, does the relationship make sense or not? Okay, Pestle and Mota is a very standard question uh, that we see quite a lot. Okay, so explain how the Pestle and Mota can be used to grind food easily. Of course, the concept here, because we're in the impulsive force zone, you need to talk about impulsive force okay so number one 
Okay, the pestle and mortar. I'm gonna I'm gonna mortar, sorry. Okay, are made of hard surfaces. Okay, the surfaces of both the pestle and mortar or are hard. Secondly, so the pestle, pestle is the alu, okay, yang, yang ketok itu, is moved at high velocity towards the mortar. Okay, third, the mortar uh, stops the pestle in a short amount of time. Okay, of course, we need to talk about short amount of time because ultimately, the short amount of time will be talking about the high impulsive force. Okay, so the rate of change of momentum is high and produces a high impulsive force. Okay, high impulsive force. So ultimately, how is the high impulsive force achieved? Because the time is short. How is the short time achieved? Because it's high velocity and hard surfaces. Okay. Passenger escape using an aeroplane emergency slide. Okay, and so the purpose of, oh, this is a section C question. Huh? So this is a modification question used to save people. Okay, design a safety airbag cushion that can be used to save people during a fire event. Uh, so that's the purpose of our modification, okay, or your design. So your design should include the aspect of material use, okay, and features of safety airbags used to rescue people. Now, there are quite a number of answers to this. Okay, and because this is, you know that you need to have five points for this. So you can talk about four aspects of the material, maybe one feature of the safety bag. You can talk about three aspects of the material. You can talk about two uh, features of the safety bag. And because they talk about aspect of material, so you don't really have to talk just about the characteristics. You can also talk about the actual material itself. Okay, so there are very many variations to this uh, question. So uh, one, of course, you want to have the standard ones. Lah. Okay, it has to be a low density material. Okay, why low density material? So that it is uh, easy to carry. Okay, easy to carry. Or our basic answer. Lah. Okay, it is lighter. Secondly, it has to be a soft material. Okay, so to increase the time of okay, impact. To decrease the impulsive force. This is very normal. Okay, another one is you have smooth surface. Okay, the material. Uh, now we're all just talking about the material first. Okay, so the smooth surface will give you, you know, so there's less friction. Uh, okay, less friction uh, when sliding down. Okay. Another one it can, you can think about is heat resistant. You need to have a heat resistant material. Okay, so heat resistant material will make sure that it doesn't get hot easily. It doesn't burn easily. Okay, so it doesn't get hot uh, easily. Okay, so then people slide down and don't slide down like on like fire or something like that. Okay, uh, whenever you talk about safety features or additional features, I would think uh, another one, it has to be a thick. Uh, airbag okay or the thick sorry yeah i guess it's an airbag lah, huh? okay so airbag cushion the airbag cushion must be thick and the reason for thick is the same as the the mattress it's not a thick mattress huh? okay to to increase the time of impact to reduce the impulsive force okay mm -hmm. and maybe one final one it should be easily inflatable Okay, so that it doesn't take such a long time to inflate. Lah. Okay, so easily inflatable. So you can say the reason for this is useful in emergency situations. Okay, or short amount of time. Short amount of time needed. 
to inflate the airbag. Okay. Now this is not an exhaustive list, lah. Means it means that not just this is the answer. I'm sure there are many more answers to this, and that's the beauty behind this question, lah. Because the question is so open, uh, it's really, really, uh, you know, there's left, uh, there are many, many ways you can answer this question. I think I didn't even mention about the word impermeable. Okay, impermeable, water resistant. I mean, you don't, I mean, it's water resistant to a certain extent. Like, not that it won't get wet, but it won't like, you know, uh, <laughs> like it won't soak up the water. Like. Okay, uh, so impermeable water is there are many many other answers to this which I'm not mentioning here. I think if you read uh, books, you can read reference books. Those of you who have the black book, you can read the black book. Uh, you will find the answers uh, to this quite a lot. Lah. Okay, everyone, let's continue. Let's go to the next question, which is from Paham. Okay, so we're gonna do uh this one, set two. So same thing as the question just now, the pile driver and the pile. So what is the meaning of impulsive force? We've covered that. Explain how the steel pile is driven to the ground. Also the same as the first question that we did just now. Uh, over here. Okay, the pile drive, the, how the pile is driven into the ground. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have uh, all these four. Lah. Okay, all these four uh, aspects into this. Okay, and then after that, so I won't go so much into this. Okay, then a metal block with a mass of 50 kg being dropped into the pile. Velocity just before it hits the pile is 20. So of course, you want to count the momentum just before it hits the piles. Okay, so the momentum is mass times velocity, which will give you 1,000 uh, kilograms meter per second. Okay, make sure you have the right unit. How fast the impulsive force? Now, since this is the fine, this just before it hits is mu, okay, mv because it stops, okay, so mv is zero, okay, so the impulsive force is zero minus one thousand over, uh, five hundred milliseconds. So make sure to change it to five hundred times ten negative three. This will give you negative 2,000 newtons. Okay, which will be this one. Lah. Okay, 9.2 shows the volleyball player serving a ball to his opponent. And then, of course, this is making a choice. Okay, so you want to have uh, a few of this, a uh, few make a few choices, get the correct technique and property. Lah. So the technique of serving is either follow through or does not follow through. Now, if anything, in impulsive force, we always want to have the follow through motion. Okay, and then uh, because by doing the follow-through motion, you have uh, an increase in the impulse. Okay, impulse increases or technically, well, you're not really talking about impulse, but you're talking about a change in momentum. Okay, change in momentum, otherwise known as the impulse increases. That's what we want. Don't talk about impulsive force uh, when you're talking about follow-through because follow-through actually increases the impulse. Okay, uh, which is also another way to increase the impulsive force. Lah. Okay, now the height of the jump, okay, high and low. Obviously, we want a high in high height of the jump. Lah. Okay, because high height of the jump means you have a higher gravitational potential energy. Okay, so we usually would use this one. Okay, just as a recap. Sorry, not as a recap. Lah. What we want is to produce high velocity of the ball. Okay, so, you know, all this contributes to that. Okay, the third one, pressure of the air inside the ball. This one, if you're a ball player, you will know this. Lah. Okay, even if you're not, this should make sense. Nobody rides a bicycle with, you know, the, the, the tires flattened. Lah. Okay, so you want to have high pressure, okay, uh, you know, of the air inside the ball. Okay, so that you can produce a larger force. Okay, and then of course, the elasticity of material. At this point, you know that we're going to choose R. You're going to go with high elasticity of material. And the reason for this will be to have a high elastic potential energy. Okay, all this contributes to a high kinetic energy, which will make the ball move at a high velocity. Okay, and so that's what we want. Okay, the choice is R. 
Okay, so this is the end of the first video. We're going to talk about process in motion only. In the next video, we'll be talking about uh, two, two topics, uh, which is gravitation and then uh, heat. Okay, so take care. I'll see you in the next video.